Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will talk about a Gramscian scholar, Robert Warburton Cox. With this video, we will also be done with the Marxist school of thought in IR, only to continue with the school of constructivism. But if you would like to have some background information about Marxism in general and Western Marxism in particular, you can check out our other videos as well. The Canadian scholar Robert Cox is the person who has done most of the theoretical work to introduce Gramsci to the study of world politics. He has developed a Gramscian approach that involved a critique of prevailing theories of IR and international political economy. In addition to that, he developed an alternative framework for the analysis of world politics. He is also known with his famous line, Theory is always for someone and for some purpose, from his article, Social Forces, States and World Orders, Beyond International Relations Theory, published in 1981. Such a statement expresses a worldview that follows a Marxist and particularly a Gramscian logic. If values and ideas are reflections of particular sets of social relations and are transformed based on the transformations of those relations, then all knowledge, at least the knowledge of the social world, must reflect a certain context, a certain time, a certain space. Knowledge cannot be objective and timeless, as realists claim. Therefore, there can also be no simple separation between facts and values. Whether consciously or not, all theorists inevitably include their values into their analysis. So, as Cox suggests, we need to look closely at each of those theories, ideas and analysis that claim to be objective or value-free, and ask who or what they are for and what purpose they serve. Basically, Cox criticizes realism and neorealism on these grounds. For Cox, realism and neorealism are for those who prosper under the prevailing order, mainly the inhabitants of the developed states, or more specifically, the ruling elites. Their purposes, whether consciously or not, is to reinforce and legitimize the status quo. They do this by making the current configuration of international relations appear natural. And when realists claim that their theory describes the world as it is, in fact, what they are doing is reinforcing the ruling hegemony in the current world order. Cox contrasts problem-solving theory, the theory that accepts the parameters of the present order and thus helps legitimize an unjust system, with critical theory. Critical theory attempts to challenge the prevailing order by seeking out, analyzing and assisting social processes that can potentially lead to emancipatory change. The theory can contribute to these emancipatory goals by developing a theoretical understanding of world orders that grasps both the sources of stability in a given system and the dynamics of processes of transformation. Cox draws on Gramsci's notion of hegemony and applies it to the international realm, arguing that hegemony is as important for maintaining stability and continuity on international level as it is on domestic level. Throughout time, dominant powers of the world shaped the system that suited their interests and have done so not only as a result of their coercive capabilities, but also because they have managed to generate broad consent for that order, even among those who are disadvantaged by it. Cox analyzed two hegemons, the UK and the USA, and argued that for those powers, the ruling hegemonic idea has been free trade. The idea of such system being beneficial for everybody has been so widely accepted to the extent that it has attained common sense status. Yet, the reality is that while free trade mostly serves the interests of the hegemon, since it is the most efficient producer in the global economy who can produce globally competitive goods, the benefits of free trade for peripheral states and regions have been far less apparent. 
Many would argue that free trade is an obstacle for the economic and social development of such actors. The degree to which a state can successfully produce and reproduce its hegemony is an indication of the extent of its power, USA being an example. But despite the dominance of the present world order, Cox does not expect the power of the USA to remain unchallenged. He maintains Marx's view that capitalism is an inherently unstable system driven by inescapable contradictions. Inevitable economic crisis will act as a catalyst for the emergence of counter-hegemonic movements, however, the success of such movements will be far from assured. In this sense, Cox faced the future on the basis of a dictum popularized by Gramsci, combining pessimism of the intellect with optimism of the will. So, that brings us to the end of this very short video about Robert W. Cox as our second Gramscian IR scholar and Marxist theory in IR. We will continue with the constructivist theory in international relations in our next video. If you liked this video, please do not forget to like it, and for our upcoming videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.